Hello there fellow herd members and welcome back to seven vlogs. Today have I got something very exciting for you. It's East Anglia versus West Country in our versus series. Uh, in this video, we're going to take you on a thrilling comparison between these two incredible regions. We're going to cover everything you need to know from the bustling towns and cities to the scrumptious local cuisines. Um, the breathtaking beaches, the most visit tourist spots and a look at sports teams in these in this part of the world. So sit back and relax and get ready to be wowed as we showcase the beauty and diversity of these two regions. Whether you're a foodie, a history buff, a beach lover, or a sports fan, you are going to love everything that's coming up in East Anglia versus the West Country. Starting with this beautiful place up in the top left hand corner, it's Bath or Bath or whichever. Um, Bath is in the West Country. It's a World Heritage Site known for its Roman baths, stunning Georgian architecture, architecture sorry, and picturesque streets. The city has a rich history dating back to Roman times. And visitors can explore the ancient Roman baths and temple complex which are incredibly well preserved. Bath Abbey is another iconic landmark in the city and is a fan vaulted ceiling is a sight to behold. Yeah, it is. It is. It is fantastic inside there. Um, up on the top right hand side is uh, Bristol. It's another city in the West Country that is worth a visit. Known for its vibrant street art scene, Bristol is home to some of the world's most famous street artists including Banksy. The city's harbour area is a great place to explore with plenty of restaurants, bars and cafes. The Clifton Suspension Bridge, which you can see in the top right hand corner, is another must-see landmark in Bristol, spanning the Avon Gorge and offering stunning views of the city and countryside. Uh, moving on to the bottom, where you'll see two fantastic seaside places. Um, down here in the right in the bottom right corner is St Ives, uh, which has some of the best waves in the in the country. Uh, the beach is surrounded by cliffs and sand dunes, making it a great spot for a coastal walk. Down here in the bottom left is is Woolacombe, uh, a brilliant stunning beach with miles of golden sand and roaming waves. Um, and the beach is backed by sand dunes and offers great views all around. Right, so in comparison, let's have a look then at East Anglia's top cities and beaches. Starting with this in the top left-hand corner, um, which is Norwich. Norwich is a city with a rich history dating back to the Roman era. The city's stunning cathedral is a must-visit landmark. Um, with its impressive spire towering over the city, Norwich Castle, which is on this side, uh, is another iconic landmark, with a museum inside that tells the story of the city's history. The city's winding streets are lined with independent shops, cafes and restaurants, making it a great place to explore. It's going on the list. <laughs> it's going on the list. Um, yeah, it sounds fantastic. It sounds like a place that here at Seven Vlogs, we would um, we would definitely like to go around the cathedral and the castle. It would, be, would make for some absolutely fantastic viewing. And that's what these videos are all. They're all a bit of fun at the end of the day. So when it comes to beaches, um, down here in the bottom left-hand corner is Holcombe Beach in Norfolk. Uh, it's, a, it's a hidden gem that's worth seeking out. The beach is part of a nature reserve and is backed by pine forests and sand dunes. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Let's get there. Let's go. <laughs> it's a great spot for a long walk with plenty of wildlife to, to spot along the way. Um, down here in the right-hand corner is Southwold Beach in Suffolk. 
to another beautiful spot with colourful beach huts and a pier that offers great views of the sea. The town of Southwold itself is also is also <laughs> also sorry <laughs> worth a visit with its charming streets and historic lighthouse. So yeah, I I can't wait to look at beaches in different areas, and I've got two here with uh, Holcomb and Southwold, and I can't wait to look at beaches in Wales. So spoil this is spoilers, guys. There's top ten um, top ten beaches in Wales coming, and there's top ten beaches in Scotland. Now um, I can't wait to do top ten beaches in Scotland. Because someone who works behind the scenes here at Seven Vlogs actually comes from Scotland. So we can actually pick their brains and they can actually tell us about what they think is the top 10 beaches in Scotland. So I can't wait to actually bring that video to you in a few weeks time. Right, moving off the subject then of beaches. Next, we're going to look at food, starting with uh, the West Country. Starting with this beauty in the top right hand corner, of course, it's the Cornish pasty. And filled with savoury ingredients such as beef, potatoes, onions and swede, you simply cannot come to the West Country without trying a traditional Cornish pasty and then swilling it down with that in the bottom left hand corner, of course, a traditional apple cider. Mmm. Yes. Um, the region is also famous for its clotted cream. Top left-hand corner. Um, for, of course, the uh, scones or scones or whatever people are calling them these days. Um, or you can add it to your desserts. And, of course, you have got, in the bottom corner there, your traditional cheeses, including cheddar, double Gloucester, which, of course, we did a... A versus episode on if you know you want to go and check that out <laughs> and um that's about that's it really for food of the west country um it's what can i say it's food it's this it's just lovely okay so let's move then to east anglian food moving on then to to moving on to east anglia they are mainly seafood lovers, including uh, smoked haddock, kippers, and salmon are just a few of the local delicacies that are sure to tantalise your taste buds. And if you're a fan of oysters, you'll be pleased to know that East Anglia is home to some of the best oysters in the UK. They have also made Coleman's mustard, Grehissom duck, and Adnam's ghost ship. Ale. I couldn't believe that Coleman's mustard was made in East Anglia until I looked closely and it says Coleman's of Norwich. You know, it kind of gives it away a bit, doesn't it? But that just shows you that I don't eat mustard because I don't I don't particularly like it. Um the Gresses the Gresses and Duck you can find in your local supermarket and you can find ghost ship in your local supermarket. So yeah, East Anglia produces quite a bit of the food that we see in supermarkets today, which is which is not really surprising considering how big you know the UK is. So yeah, there you have it for the food side. The last bit we're going to go into now is the sports teams of, well, the football side, should we say, of East Anglia and the West Country. Okay, so the last thing I want to look at is sport in East Anglia and the West Country. These four teams that I've got on the screen now are probably the best four teams um, from from in, in those regions. So in East Anglia, you've got Norwich and Ipswich. Um, and in the West Country, you've got Bristol City and Plymouth. There was an argument that I could have put Bristol Rovers in there. But the way Plymouth are playing at the moment, I think Plymouth deserve to be in there. Um, Plymouth and Ipswich are battling for the League One title, which is an interesting battle. Um, 
befitting of this video, actually, really, to see who comes out on top there. Uh, the top two teams, Norwich, are pushing for promotion to the Premiership. Bristol City are a mid-table championship side. But that could all change in the future. We, we don't know. Um, and that's something that both uh, both teams have got to, got to look at. And that's it. That is it for our versus um, series today. What do you guys think? The, put a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button. We passed 300 subscribers yesterday, which is incredible. I'm trying to get to 1,000. So we're on the road to 1,000. That is where I want to be by the summer. 1,000 subscribers.